I first got into music, I worked in a jingle studio on uh, reel-to-reel tape when I was about 18, and I used to have to cut jingles down into 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, whatever, and voiceovers and, and stuff like that, and work with uh, a lot of different voiceover artists. At the moment, I'm working on uh, a variety of stuff. I, I, I always um, make music for my own pleasure. Um, I feel like I've done my done my pop years. You know, we 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 had a a great time in the '90s and the 2000s, and uh, did a lot of touring, toured the world about ten times. And um, now I just make music for the fun of it, really. And I also make music uh, commissions for for picture, for for films, TV adverts, that kind of stuff. My dream studio is something you know like uh motown or or even as somewhere as big as abbey road or the stacks you know that that kind of um atmosphere you know where bands played in one room and 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 the mics spilled and 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 it really felt like music you know and and i these days i i spend my time trying to recreate that the sound that I have in my head, which is the sound from those old records. So I have a lot of old gear and that, that helps me kind of make these things larger than life. And, and uh, you know, a lot of valve gear and a lot of transformers and stuff um, and that helps that along, yeah. I find these days with a lot of musicians and particularly some singers, um, they don't have a lot of patience. They've now got used to a culture whereby engineers will say the you know do that twice do that three times all right you're done see you later and the the the, the best way of doing it is to do between three and ten takes try and capture the spirit and and then use the tools to enhance it i mean it's amazing for backing vocals i mean vocal line is just pure voodoo it's magic i i i I, you know, I track up, I don't know, eight, 12 BVs, and then it will just put them all in just beautiful. I have it slightly loose, so it still sounds natural, and it just sounds wonderful, you know, and, and, and it will tune them and time them, and it just makes my job so easy, you know. Um, but the performance has to be there to, to, for it to, to really work, otherwise it starts to sound too robotic. In the old days, when people had to nail something, you know, like they'd have to nail a four-minute take. You might do a couple of drop-ins for them to help them out, but they could perform. Where these days, you know, a musician will say, oh, "I'll just give you a couple, and then you can do what you want with it." You know, um, with singing, they still have to actually deliver because singing, to all intents and purposes, is usually the most important thing on a record. The most impressive and, and cheeky thing I've ever done is uh, with a rapper that couldn't rap in time. I've actually rapped his rap uh, in time with Groove and then, and then dubbed him to my timing. And it's actually worked and sounded perfect. <laughs> Vocal line is so clever. <laughs> Vocal line will get used all the time, right up until the very, very last print of a mix. Um, it just basically, you know, the, the the further you get into a mix, the more it will start to expose sort of uh, discrepancies in timing and, and stuff like that. So vocal line will, will be used to tighten things up. I, I might move vocals at the last minute. I might want them more laid back. I might want you know a different kind of feel and and then i can just use vocal line to quickly just knock the rest into shape so i use it all the way from from the the moment that a vocalist has put down their vocal right through till um the at the end of a mix i don't want to sound too evangelistic no. but I, I i couldn't live really w without vocal line it it's it is a godsend it's it's amazing.